Addie Soldiers. I can't currently go on a tropical vacation, so I might as well dress like one. I wanted to film like a best books of the summer, summer wrap up kind of video, and of course the day that I decide to do that, it's dark and raining outside, but I guess that's Vancouver for you. I'm also drinking tea because it's the time of night that I want to be drinking coffee, but say it all with me, folks, that would be a bad idea. So tea it is. I didn't mean for this video to be so dark, so I was like, oh, summer wrap-ups would be like bright and summery and, you know, exciting and colorful. Um, but time doesn't exist anymore in any capacity, so we're just gonna have a slightly... We're gonna have a moody summer wrap-up, which actually is quite atmospheric as it is now Halloween season in a couple of days. Also, this video is gonna be a little bit shorter than usual because uh, in July I read a whole bunch of new adult books for a video that I was making, which I believe is up there. I read a lot of new adult books in July, and we're not gonna mention any of those because it was just... Uh, reading all those books was like attending an elementary school sports day. There were red flags everywhere. But today I wanted to be excited about something. I want to talk about some good ones, some of the best ones that came out in the last couple months that I have read. Oh, wow. I am, I added, oh, I added too much laundry detergent to the washing cycle for this dress. Oh, wow. I am extremely lemon fresh right now, which might be the best segue I've ever come up with in my life because I first want to talk about True Life by Jay Kristoff. This is the third and final book of the Lifelike trilogy that deals with like a Mad Max dystopian, the world's gone to shit, everything's either mechanical or biotech, and everything's gross and nuclear, and there's a bunch of cyborgs dueling it out, and there's these two mega corporations that are fighting over what is left of the USA. This is the kind of book where you go, oh, this is fine, everything's fine, I'm sure it'll be fine, while well, internally screaming. There were some creative decisions taken that I did not necessarily vibe with, uh, nor agree on. So I'll put a trigger warning right here that uh, people commit suicide like it's the newest TikTok dance craze, and I wasn't too crazy about that. And the ending was very YA, which like, I can't fault it because it is a YA book, but the rest of the series is very dark and gritty and really went into like, what makes us human? And like, what's the future gonna look like? And climate change is absolutely real. To then have an ending that was like, everything's gonna be good one day, we're gonna fix the world. And I was kind of like, eh, I didn't quite, there's this, and there's some uh, thematic dissonance, if you will, I'm gonna flex my English major skills. But overall, as the end to a series, I was pretty happy with it. I did really enjoy some of the, the, just the relationships that people build, and like the relationship that people have to tech, and what the world's gonna look like, uh, if we decide to just keep going down the route that we're going at. And it's just, it's existential and it's gritty and it was wild. There's some cool, like, there's some good sassy characters, you know? Enjoyed. This next book I gave a 5 out of 5 stars to, which is a very rare and exclusive list to be on in my reading world. So let me introduce you to The Faithless Hawk by Margaret Owen, which I just realized is also a sequel, and that is to The Merciful Crow, which is over there if you can see it. I loved the first book of this series because it's about multiple castes of people in this fantasy world that all have different kinds of magic, and they're all named after birds, and our main character Fi comes from the crow case, and they are the plague doctors. Very thematically appropriate. In the first book we had to smuggle out a prince and his bodyguard, and then there was a bunch of like intrigue and spy missions and cool teeth magic. Gods choosing patrons to uh, imbue their powers on, and it was such an interesting world. And she exploded it in this sequel. This is what I really liked about this book, is that it took what was already there and it just built on it. It made it bigger and it made it more intense, and that's why at the end of this book it was a little bit of a full circle that just, oh, it gave me so many feelings, and it was like, yes, it is the thing! that I've been waiting for, and it's just, it's so good! So in here we have even more political intrigue and people pretending to be other people and spies and more death and teeth magic and like, ooh, what an ending. What an ending. I'm so impressed, love this duology, I will absolutely read whatever else Margaret Owen puts out because she is now one of my autobi authors. Then we had one of my favorite things to read, which is a retold fairy tale, but even better, it's a retold fairy tale from the villain's point of view. So I give you Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Basherdoust. This is like if the princess in the tower was also the monster. This is about a princess named Soraya who lives apart from her family, and she has the power to kill anything she touches. After accidentally making a bargain with the wrong god, she doesn't have this power anymore, but then sets off a chain of events that lead her into demonic dealings and issues with the entire kingdom as demons threaten to take over. This book is the epitome of mild-mannered, violently-minded. Also, I got like 
a third of the way through was like, yes, it's gay. There was some great bi representation in here, which I don't see too often. So that was nice. Interesting take on Persian mythology and a couple other magical creatures that I haven't seen in any other fantasy novel, in particular these like moth wing demons. One of my favorite parts about this was that not only is she the villain, but we do get another villain and we get the other villain interacting with this unvillain. So the way that the author explored both sides of an argument and played devil's advocate very literally in this was really cool to see because I love those morally gray characters, but being able to see both of them kind of on either side of what is good and what is bad was a really good way to like engage with both the characters and the audience. Me and my little bitter heart enjoyed this quite a bit. And then and then we have a book that I'm so glad it was good because I went to like three different bookstores trying to find this stupid thing because it's not stupid. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry I called you that. You're not stupid. You're wonderful. And it is Seven Devils by Laura Lim and Elizabeth May. I was like, I gotta get my hands on that. Went f everywhere trying to find it because apparently there's like two bookstores in the entire Lower Mainland that had one copy and I got to this one. <laughs> you know me. I love a good found family in space adventure and this did not disappoint. On one hand, we get like a, a crew of people, but we also have Eris, who is the heir to the galactic space empire that everybody hates, and her father's trash, and she faked her own death to be able to escape that. Uh, and then we have another girl who uh, originally trusted her, but doesn't anymore, and her name's Chloe. She's badass and has a prosthetic leg. We get another group of characters, including a soldier and a courtesan and an AI hacker. Also, the character of Ariadne is now my new baby. She is a pure sugar-topped fruit salad, and I will hunt down and kill anybody who says anything bad about her. This world is very bleak. We have humans being grown in vats, we have an empire taking over planets like they're children's toys, and an entire space empire controlled by one AI. Which doesn't seem like a good continuity plan. See, the thing I find that I have difficulty connecting with in a lot of sci-fi books is that it's just on such a large scale because space is scary and it's constantly expanding and we don't know what's out there. So to me it just seems so outrageous that like I can't wrap my brain around it. This book did such a good job of connecting those interpersonal relationships and like friend drama and betrayal and trust with this kind of existential space travel and astrophysics questions and then like the ultimate questions of like what makes us human? Who are actually the good guys? What do we do when we encounter other sentient races that aren't like us? And then throw in a plague in there, because everybody loves a plague right now, right? But I'm very upset that this ended the way it did, because this means that there's gonna be another book, which means I have to wait for the next book. I'm mad about that, because it was very, very good, and a very, very big cliffhanger. Ha! Huh. And then we have a couple of books that I don't have physical copies of, so I shall just do this and a photo will appear, like A Kinder Poison by Natalie May. Ooh, look at that. Wow, editing. This book goes into the actual worst case of having a mistaken identity of all time ever. Best case scenario, you're an accidental celebrity. Worst case scenario is you end up being a human sacrifice that multiple heirs to the throne have to track down through a desert and kill to ensure succession. <laughs> what a ride, am I right? This book did have a lot about succession and royalty and kind of growing up in a royal family that is very competitive, but my favorite part about it was the morality question and how what does being a good king mean and how sometimes if you're a good king you're gonna have to do bad things. There's a lot of stuff about family and connection and like who you decide to trust and Zero and Jet together is like oh wholesome pure. My fires are lit, my crops are watered. And I do feel like I could very much so connect with Zero because I, as well, get very excited when speaking about chocolate. The villainous brother has a really good backstory and I liked actually how much time we got to spend with him, especially how much time Zero gets to spend with him, because that was a good kind of look into people's psyches and how d dabbling in magic can maybe change you for the better but also for the worse. The only thing that was off about this book was the descriptions. Like I felt I read the whole book and I had no idea what anybody looked like. Like I think at the beginning they mentioned that Zero has red hair but like halfway through they mentioned she has bangs and I'm like where did this come from? And what bothers me so much is that nobody is ever sunburned despite having a range of skin tones and going through a desert with no sunscreen except for like one magical cooling cloak and everyone's just just like fine and I'm like this is unrealistic and the horse girl in me is very happy about this book because there were so many horses and there's a fire horse and I love her like this book was great and it was a debut like girl work <laughs> now we should talk about another one that has a very beautiful cover and that is 
Forest of Souls by Lori Lee. Our main character Searsha is training to be like the queen's chosen one protector assassin and she accidentally finds out that she is a shaman which in this world uh, are beings of immense power that are being hunted. So now that her magic has been awoken she is summoned to the domain of the Spider King and in this kind of learns about some political rivalries within the kingdom and how bad it really is. Let me say if you don't like spiders Oh boy, this is not the book for you! I did feel like the plot meandered a little bit. It probably could have been a shorter book or maybe focused a little bit more on the rivalries between things. I just felt like the whole middle was a little bit muddy. But overall, oh my god, this book is so visual. It's so atmospheric, especially when talking about this creepy black magic somewhat sentient soul trap forest. See, I said that Halloween was coming and this is an absolutely perfect book to start off your Halloween with. I know that it's August or maybe September. I don't know what day it is when I'm posting this. I don't know what day it is ever. I would definitely add this to your TBR pile because after reading this, there are so many amazing fight scenes. This is some of the best fight choreography I have ever read, and it, so much so that it makes me want to pick up a sword, which is not a good idea for anybody involved, including myself. Oof. And uh, even though it's not summer anymore, my camera's still overheated. So hopefully this is still an okay frame. There's one more book that I want to talk about, and I feel like I'm cheating slightly, but it's my video, so I can do whatever I want, and you can't stop me. The book that I want to talk about is one I haven't finished yet, but it's so good so far that I felt like I had to include it. And that is that I finally started reading this beautiful thing, which is A Song of Race and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. This book asks the real questions, like, how do you feel about capes? Not only do we have a really cool African fantasy novel, but we have the princess whose mother gets assassinated. She has to be queen. She's not down. We're trying to resurrect the dead queen, which like hashtag relatable. And to do so, she needs the blood of a king. And so she decides with this lining up with the festival of Sostasia to hold a bit of a tournament that whoever wins gets her hand in marriage. And of course, the other character is one of the competitors who has entered this almost by accident, but also for a good reason, because he's trying to get his sister back who got kidnapped by a demon, which like happens sometimes. So not only do we have the things I love, like deals with demons and some Hunger Games-esque inspired champion picking, but we get a really cool and intricate god pantheon that I'm very excited to continue finding more about. I'm only about halfway through, if you can see that there. So with Karina being a part of a long line of matriarchal rulers, it brings up a lot about expectations and growing up with this big legacy on your head. And then our other character, Malik, is an immigrant and his struggle trying to get into the city and just to save his family and keep them together. And something that I'm really enjoying so far is how Malik suffers from panic attacks and I know some people don't like or don't prefer mental health issues in fantasy books because if it's a fantasy book everyone's gonna be smoking hot and like have like really good um, brain chemistry. I personally really like when that stuff happens because I can see a piece of myself in a fantasy character, you know what I'm saying? So that struggle of his is a large part of his character and I'm really enjoying how that's coming into the story so far and like I said only about halfway through but loving it so far, made it onto the best books of summer without even having read it, and that says something. Plus, it's just, it's so beautiful, it's so shiny, and oh, just like, fuck me up with this, you know? So there you have it, there are my favorite books of summer 2020. Guys, we made it, we made it through the summer, fall is right around the corner, maybe it's already here, I don't know. It seems like, well, you know, it's gloomy and raining outside, which means we've officially entered into the gloomy, rainy season of Vancouver, which is gonna last now for the next nine months. But am I happy about that? Absolutely. I'm so tired of being sweaty. Even though I did just get this very fun dress on sale. And it has pockets. You can't see the pocket. pockets. <laughs> While this year's summer lineup did slap, I did feel like there was a couple of disappointments, so I did leave those out because this video would be like a million years long. So make sure to leave in the comment section down below what your favorites were, because I did, you know, skim over some of these, didn't even put in some of these. I, I have some in the mail currently that I guess technically are from summer. But you know what? It's fall now. It's officially fall. Once September 1st hits, it's fall and no one can change my mind. Even the fact that it's still like 28 degrees outside. Doesn't matter. It's fall. You know where to click to like the video. You know where to click to subscribe. I hope you guys are all having a nice day wherever you are and I will see you all next week. Bye!